I want you to take a look at my YouTube channel page. If you quickly scroll through my videos, you'll see that most of them have to do with the topic of mental health, and only about two of them have been related to productivity in the past two years. This is because the most important factor towards building the life you want, being more disciplined, and changing your perspective on reality lies within yourself. Let's rewind the clock a little. When I first dove into the world of self-improvement around five years ago, productivity was one of the main skills I wanted to get better at. I thought there would be some golden ticket that I would eventually find that would finally crack the code as to why I get caught in what's called the work avoidance cycle. The feeling of despair, checking Instagram, checking YouTube, standing up and doing something to get my mind off the fact that I just wasted a bunch of time, and then back to the feeling of despair. If this story sounds anything like what you're currently struggling with, then I promise you, the answer does not lie in watching one more productivity video. None of the advice will ever work, or at least it will only work for a short period of time. The only thing that has ever worked for me until this day is the most simple and obvious advice that nobody applies. While going for a walk one day to clear my mind after procrastinating editing my next video for a couple hours, I was listening to my favorite podcast, the Tim Ferriss podcast, and he was interviewing the author, Neil Gaiman. If you aren't familiar with him, Neil Gaiman is a writer, a comic book creator, screenwriter, and voice actor. He's written short fiction books like Coraline, novels, comic books, graphic novels, and nonfiction, and he's won tons of awards for his work. When it comes to these YouTube videos, writing the script and staying focused on that task is easily the thing I struggle most with, so I thought that this prolific writer might have the secret golden ticket I was so desperately trying to dig up. And with just a few sentences, he finally hit me with it. This is what he said. And I think that's a, I think it's a really just a solid rule for writers. It's like, yeah, you don't have to write. You have permission to not write. That you don't have permission to do anything else. After hearing this, those dusty, unused cogs in my brain that I was waiting to have turned on with the right information booted up and started running. The problem was not the fact that I was procrastinating my work, but rather all the forms of procrastination that I was capable of doing. The only thing that I could do to beat my procrastination and finally start being productive was to make it literally impossible to do anything other than one of these two things. The task I wanted to complete, or absolutely nothing. And by nothing, I mean the only other thing you could possibly do is stare at the back of a cereal box. And so finally, instead of wasting my time looking up another video on the newest productivity shortcut, every time I sit down to do my work, this is what I do. Firstly, there's the work that I do that is computer-based. The majority of my work that I do for my YouTube channel and my business is on my computer, and with that comes a ton of distractions. And I especially feel this resistance when I'm writing my script, so I needed to make it impossible to use anything but Google Docs. So I downloaded the extension Stay Free, which blocks any website you decide to put into the dashboard. After putting in every website I most frequently used when procrastinating, I would go to work. But when I first did this, I found found that my resistance towards my work was so strong that I'd end up scrolling through other sites I almost never use just so I could avoid my work. I'd check my bank account or look up random things on Google or browse a form I had never previously used. So I ended up adding every single website I even rarely used to that extension until finally I actually could not use anything but Google Docs. And with that, my mindless internet scrolling while doing my work was solved on my computer at least. I still had the biggest distraction to tackle, my phone. My usual plan to tackle this was to set it in the other room or do my personal favorite, throw it behind me or onto my bed. But still, every five minutes or so, I would look over at it, stop my work and habitually start scrolling. So I knew I had to somehow lock myself out of that as well. When I had an Android, I would use an app called Lock Me Out. This allows you to lock yourself out of all apps except for a select few you choose, like your phone app, for a certain time period. And if you want to unlock an app, you literally have to pay money to unlock it. And if if you're anything like me, you're not gonna pay a couple bucks just to open up Instagram and see Becky show off her ass. When I ended up getting an iPhone again, I knew that I had to find an app that was similar to this concept. And luckily, I remembered an app that I used way back in the day that really helped me called Forest. It's similar to Lock Me Out, but without having to actually pay to unlock an app. 
You set a time you'd like to be focused on your work, and a little virtual tree grows during that time, and won't be completed until the timer is up. And if you go into any other apps, that virtual tree will die. There's an option in the app called Deep Focus, where even if you close out of the app, your virtual tree will die. So of course, the Deep Focus option is always the one that I use. So when I combine a website blocker with a Lock Me Out app, I actually do still do nothing for a decent portion of my work time. But because the nothing I do is either staring out the window laying down on my floor or meditating, my brain eventually seeks for something more stimulating, and I tell myself, well, I can't do anything else but the work, so I might as well just work, and I'm finally able to accomplish a task. In your current scenario, you might need to do more than just lock yourself out of your phone and your computer. Every single thing that you find distracts you in your environment that stops you from doing your work or nothing at all, you need to remove completely. And if there are still distractions in your environment that you can't remove, then the thing you need to remove from that environment is yourself. For example, if you live in a crowded home where other people are using distractions, go to a local coffee shop to get your work done, until finally, nothing is the only thing that separates you from your work. But I do have to admit that even after all of this, there is still one problem that used to haunt me before YouTube was my job that I'm sure is haunting all of you right now. And that is getting started and staying consistent. It's Isaac Newton's first law of motion. An object at rest stays at rest, and an object in motion stays in motion. The same is true for what you're trying to accomplish. When going to the gym, working on your business, and attracting more success into your life isn't producing a return on investment, which is common when you're first starting any endeavor, it completely destroys any sort of motivation to continue. And then you go back to being at rest after a very short period of motion. I dealt with this problem a lot in my early years of trying to work for myself. How was it that I was able to complete assignments in school on time always, but whenever I tried to start or stay consistent on any other endeavors or projects outside of school, I would always fail. The answer to this problem as well is just as simple and obvious as the first solution that we discussed, and it has everything to do with having the right mindset. The reason I was able to finish assignments in school was because my reason for completing my assignment goals far outweighed any doubts and negative thoughts I had towards the assignments themselves. School was my primary occupation at that time, along with working a part-time job as a busser at a city club. Being a busser was practically the only job that I had throughout my life at that time since I was 14 or 15, and I absolutely despised it. I knew that if I wanted to escape the service industry for good, I'd have to do well in school and get a degree. How would I get a degree? By completing my assignments. So every time I thought about skipping an assignment or study session, I would ask myself, what's the alternative here? Oh yeah, it's work a job you absolutely hate for the rest of your life. When I set those two potential routes in my mind, and I visualized and felt what my life would look like if I decided to stop showing up to class and skip my assignments, and then work in the service industry because of it, I had no other choice but to be on my shit. And that's exactly how you need to think about your endeavors and goals outside of your primary occupation as well. It essentially needs to be, I would rather die than choose the path that I don't want to go towards. I know you're waiting for some magical mystery sauce that will make you work harder, but that's really just it. You don't want it bad enough. You have just enough comfort in your life right now that suppresses you from taking action, and you don't contemplate what your life will look like enough if you don't decide to take action. Till this day, it is something that I struggle with, so I've recently put up a reminder on my dry erase board. Whenever I'm getting too complacent with my YouTube work, I look at what I wrote. Remember what you're doing this for. 1 million subscribers. It's either continue putting out videos and making content, or live a life you don't want to. And I sure as hell am not choosing the latter. So, I'm gonna ask you again. How badly do you want it? What's good everybody, Editing Cole here. I realized while I was editing this video that a lot of the theme of this video pertains to the self-help book that I actually wrote, which is The Middle Way, How to Strategically Use Laziness to Enhance Your Creative Power. A lot of you guys still don't know this, but yes, I did write a self-help book. And in this book, I go over a lot of practices that relate to healthy procrastination, being bored more, and genuinely doing nothing when you should be doing nothing. So if you wanna dive deeper into that topic and learn some life philosophies that I've 
I've just used throughout my life. I wrote this two years ago, but I still use a ton of the things that I wrote in this book till this day. Then you can go to the link in the description under my books. You can get the paperback version on Amazon. You can get the ebook version on my website. Both links are there. So yeah, go check it out if you want. That is it. There's no secret. Doing this along with watching this video on why you can't stay disciplined, I find this is like the best video I've ever made on productivity apart from this one. If you combine the advice in both of these videos, you don't have to watch a single productivity video again. If you do, you're just wasting your time at that point. Thank you to all my patrons on Patreon who are helping to support this channel. This is where you get exclusive content from me and you can talk to me on the phone one-on-one -on, -one on there. Link in the description to that. That's it for this video. Go do your work, please. It's time.